Hi everyone, welcome to another Hatton's Model Railways live stream. And this morning we're covering some more of the basic knowledge behind the real railways that really helps you understand your models too. We're talking about wheel arrangements on locomotives. You'll see these mentioned pretty much everywhere in books on locos, in product listings on our website, and all across the real railways too. But what did it mean? Why are you looking at a locomotive and it's denoted as a 264 tank engine? Why are you looking at the latest modern diesel and it's a bow bow design? What do these different words mean and what, how can we tell them apart? That's the whole purpose of today's session. So I've got a guide on the UK system today. There are some slightly different systems internationally that we may cover in a different video, but this is mainly how these locomotives are categorized in the UK. If you've got any further questions, don't hesitate to put a comment on the video, live chat if you're watching us live this morning, or get in touch with our customer team who are more than happy to help you here at Hattons too. Otherwise, let's get started. And back in the earliest days of steam, as we can see here with this furnace railway locomotive, wheel arrangements weren't really a thing that was needed. Now, of course, the wheels were still in pretty much the same format that the locomotives are today with trailing wheels and powered wheels on these locomotives. You can see four wheels at the front of this locomotive underneath the boiler there. These are connected by what is known as either coupling or connecting rods to ensure that the power goes from the cylinders through these wheels down onto the track to help the adhesion of the locomotive there. But there wasn't really that many larger locomotives at this time. They were very small designs such as this with either four or six wheels. And these locomotives were therefore known as four coupled with four wheels or six wheeled with six coupled wheels on them. Of course, there were some systems started to be brought in during the late 19th century. But the main system that was brought in was the white notification. This was developed in America in the early 1900s and adopted in the UK as its system. You'll see here some of the notes from the original classifications. Many of these wheel arrangements don't apply to locomotives within the UK. Some of them are far larger than locomotives that ever saw service in the UK. But we'll go through some of these differentiations here. So you can see that there's lots of small and large circles here and probably quite a few names you recognize on the right hand side of the sheet too. So let's take a look at a locomotive and describe just how this system works. This morning I've picked the Flying Scotsman Loco, probably one of the most famous steam locomotives in the world. You'll notice that we've only got the front half of the locomotive here today. The tenders generally didn't come into this classification system, but the locomotive is the most important part. So we have a lot of wheels to look at of various different sizes here today. So we'll start from left to right as the system denotes and we'll work through and find out what wheel classification this locomotive is. So starting at the front, we have four wheels underneath the smoke box there. Now these are unpowered wheels. These are purely to help support the weight of the locomotive and therefore they're known by a couple of different names, either front pony wheels, front trailing wheels, front trailing axles. Either way, they are the front unpowered wheels on our locomotive. We have four of them there, two axles with a wheel on each end. So that is the four to start us off. Heading over to the big wheels in the middle, <clears throat> there's six wheels here, again, three on each side. These are connected, as you can see, by the coupling rods there up to the cylinders on this locomotive. You can see them just under the chimney on Flying Scotsman here. These are the powered wheels on this locomotive. These are the wheels that are powered by the cylinders and the steam within them to generate the power to pull the train. So our powered wheels, or as they are known in many cases, our driving wheels, these are in the middle, as you can see here, generally on most designs, and these are six. So we've got four and six. Heading over to the back of the locomotive, we have just one set of rear trailing wheels. These again are unpowered on this particular locomotive and used again to help support the weight of this particular design. 
We have two wheels again on one axle, so we have four, six, two. So heading back to our locomotive there, we'll go right over to find Scotsman without any denotation. We now know that this is a four, six, two wheel arrangement with four unpowered wheels at the front, six driving wheels in the middle, and two unpowered wheels at the rear. And this pretty much sets the scene for the wheel arrangements on steam locomotives. Once you know your system there, you really are starting to get an idea of what wheel arrangements fit. Again, looking at the guide here from the very early days of this design, many of these aren't applicable, but we can see just a few down there, the 462 type with four small wheels, six large wheels, and two small wheels at the rear there. This is known as a Pacific locomotive. Some of these names which were coined for the original system did carry across to the UK. Some of them didn't, but the Pacific is one of those that did come across with the 462 wheel arrangement. Another one that came across, some of you will be familiar with this, is the Prairie wheel arrangement, which counts as the 262. So here, if we're looking at our locomotive from the front, we have two wheels underneath the front of the locomotive there, two small pony wheels, as we refer to them as. Six driving wheels again, the same as Flying Scotsman. These again connected to the cylinders by those coupling rods or driving rods in some cases. And two wheels again under the bunker at the rear of the locomotive there, making us have our 262 wheel arrangement. You don't always need something in every single one of those numbers. Not every locomotive has trailing wheels or front wheels, as you can see. Heading over to a design here, this is the London Midland Scottish Railways Ginty locomotives. These have neither front trailing wheels or rear trailing wheels, just six coupled driving wheels. So we have here an 060 design. And one more for you to show. Again, you can have front wheels, but no back wheels. This is the famous 9F locomotive, the Heavy Freight 210O. So we've got two axles supporting the weight at the front that are unpowered just behind the buffer beam. You can see them there on this locomotive. The cylinders then are connected to 10 driving wheels. This was a very rare arrangement within the UK but you've got 10 driving wheels there. So you've got two, 10, and there's no rear trailing wheels on this locomotives. So that is something there for you to think about. We've got a 210O design. So now you look at some locomotives, I'll give you a few to think about yourselves too. I'll give, give you the answers after a couple of seconds, of course. This is a London Southwestern Railway locomotive. I've put it the other way around to trick you a little bit. But again, working from the front of the locomotive is where we start our wheel arrangement, regardless of which way it's facing. And this, as I'm sure many of you have already guessed, is a 440 locomotive. You have your four wheels at the front there, supporting the weight of the locomotive, but they are unpowered. And then you have your four driving wheels, just hidden by what's called the splashes on this particular locomotive but you can see the particular design there too. Looking at a couple of the locomotives in front of me here, we've had a request to look at the Barclay. This is an 040 design. Again, we've got no front or rear trailing wheels. This just has the four powered wheels on this particular locomotive. And we have a 264 tank engine design in front of us here. Again, two small wheels free driving and four on the rear supporting pony truck there too. There are a couple of exceptions to this rule. And again, looking at our system, we can see some of the different styles again. Some of these only really found in the continent and in America too. But heading over to a locomotive where it gets a little confusing. This is the Garrett locomotive, which was in effect two sets of locomotive wheels applied to one design with a single boiler. So this was actually quite simple to categorize. You may think, how does this quite work? 
but it was really categorized as two sets of wheel arrangements. So what we have here is a 260. So you can see the two supporting wheels, the two supporting front pony wheels at the front, the six driving wheels, and then no wheels at the back under the boiler there, and exactly this arrangement at the same end, at the far end. So this became a 260 plus 062. They just put the wheel arrangements together, join them in, and it counts as one locomotive. So you can use the system and amend it a little bit to come up with changes like that too. So that really categorizes steam locomotives. You can look at 99% of steam locomotive designs and accommodate them with that white system that you can see there. This is really commonly used across the USA and in England and the UK too. Not so common in Europe, but other systems are in place there that are just as easy to understand as this one. And we may cover those in a future video. Heading over to the diesels, these have their own distinctive system too. Some of them come under the white notification with their similarity to steam locomotives. So we see here a class 08 diesel shunter. Whilst it is a diesel on top, it's got a very similar set of wheel arrangements to some of the steam locomotives we've seen before. We have no front supporting wheels. We have no rear supporting wheels, but we do, very similar to a steam locomotive, have six coupled wheels in the middle. So this is an 060 locomotive, similar to the steam locomotives that we saw previously. Not many of the UK's diesel designs do have connecting rods similar to steam locos such as this. Mainly the, uh, the small shunting fleet that is in use on the UK's railways. Some of the really small shunters do come under a slightly separate arrangement. We'll look here at the Hornby model of the 88DS diesel shunter. Now these have no coupling rods between the wheels, but these are connected to the engine and the transmission via chains. So these would count as a 4W or four wheel. So the drives are connected there. They do have a fully connected up set of four wheels, but as they don't have the coupling rods between them, this doesn't count as an 040, it does count as a 4W. Again, there isn't many of that particular design out there, but it is something to bear in mind if you don't see the coupling rods on some of the smaller shunters. Heading over to the larger diesels, these really started to change the designs in the 1940s and 1950s by having separate pivoting bogies underneath the locomotives. As we can see here on this Class 47 diesel, these were separate to the actual frames of the locos themselves, fully powered with electric traction motors in them to drive the wheels round. These were set up in sets. So you do have powered bogies and in some rare cases on powered bogies too. So let's go through some of those different types and we'll see how these are categorized. Again, we're looking at the number of wheels on these particular bogies, but we are looking at the wheels that are powered. So here we have a class 33 diesel locomotive. We have four wheels on each axle, on each bogie should I say, as we can see here, and all of these wheels are powered. So the bogey system is, if it's a powered bogey that has four wheels, it's called a bow bogey. If it's a powered bogey, a six wheel powered bogey, it's a co bogey. And if it's an eight wheel powered bogey, it's a doe bogey. So here we have a bow bow wheel arrangement. So we have two sets of bogies both of them with four powered wheels which makes the bow wheel arrangement on one bogey put the two bogies together and you have the bow bow wheel arrangement as you see here this gives rise to a few designs such as the co co wheel arrangement we see on a lot of the uk's diesel designs between that and the bow bows we see this covers many of the 
diesel and electric locomotive fleet on the UK's railways. There are some exceptions out there again with the Kobo locomotives with one six wheel powered bogey and one four wheel powered bogey on these locomotives too. Some of the early locomotives, the early diesel types, should I say, did have unpowered wheel sets too. These were used for exactly the same reason as the pony wheels on steam locomotives. These were used to help distribute the weight across the wheels on the loco, but weren't used for power. Two of these axles can be seen here on the British Rail Class 40 diesel locomotive. And these are joined by six powered axles, as you can see here. So the front wheels at either end are just used for supporting the weight. This, however, gives rise to its own wheel arrangement. And any unpowered wheels that we see on diesel locomotives are purely denoted by the number of axles. So here we have one axle at each end, but we do have the co-arrangement on each bogey for the six wheel powered bogey. So what we have is a one co, co one. So we start with the one at the unpowered wheel at the left end. We have the co in the middle. We have co again on the rear bogey. And finally heading back to the wheel most on the right, we have the one again. So one co, co one. This again isn't that common a wheel arrangement in the UK. Not many diesels were built with unpowered bogies, but there are a few out there, so do hunt them out if it is something you're interested in having a closer look at. So just to give you a recap of some of the systems there, this is available, it's, you can find it online, and of course you can do a screenshot of the video, I'll be putting it on our website too. There's a lot of locomotives here that you don't find in the UK, but I'm sure you can find some of your favourite UK locomotives on there too. These being the steam locomotive types that you see here. So looking at some of the designs that we didn't see the first time around, we see the 084 tank engine here with eight coupled wheels at the front with no supporting wheels or trailing wheels. Sorry, no, there is the trailing wheels at the back there, so the 084 design. So you've got 084 on this particular locomotive. And then the Adams radial design, which has four wheels on the front unpowered bogey. So it's four, four wheels on the driving wheels there, powering the locomotive. So four again, and then two rear trailing wheels supporting the locomotive at the rear. So four, four, two. So I hope that's helped give you a bit of an understanding behind some of the listings on our website. Do feel free to head over to the website, follow the link in the description and check out some of the products and just have a look at some of the pictures. You'll see the wheel arrangements listed in the product descriptions and in the product titles. So now you'll be able to find out exactly what they mean and exactly how they apply to the locomotives. Either that you're thinking of picking up or the latest locomotive that's arrived on your layout. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you'd like to learn some more about model railways or indeed real life railways, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like our Facebook page for more videos like this, model railway skills cast sessions, and of course, all the latest model railway news too. Otherwise, thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.